Hello, and welcome to another TA Tech Tip. This tech tip will introduce the JDX Export File Conversion Program for mass spectrometer data files. The JDX Export File Conversion Program allows for bar graph data collected from a discovery mass spectrometer to be converted to a file format that is readable by the National Institute of Standards and Technology, or NIST, Library Search Program. In this case, it converts it to a .jdx format. The data to be converted must be in bar graph form. The first step is to open the bar graph data in the MKS recall program so that the particular bar graph scan to be converted can be located. So we'll open the MKS recall program here. We'll find the file. In this case, it is data collected from a polystyrene sample run in a TGA. If you have never used recall to look at bar graph data before, notice that three windows are opened simultaneously. The bottom window is where the bar graph data of interest is located. Use of the slider allows for searching of the collected bar graph scans until the desired one is located. Usually there will be several bar graphs collected during a decomposition and one must select the best ones for the library search. So we use the slider until we get to the point where the polystyrene decomposition products are detected. You can continue through to see where the signal drops back down, indicating that the decomposition has ended. So there is a range of data where there are bar graphs associated with the polystyrene decomposition and we just need to find the scan or scans that we desire to convert. Note that the scan number is given at the bottom of the window. In this case, scan 863 is the scan that I will choose to convert. It has good peak structure. Next, close the file in the recall program. You cannot have the file open in recall and attempt to have the JDX export program open it simultaneously. Open the JDX export program. Load the file of interest using the select file button. There's polystyrene. Once the data is brought in, we see that the file name is displayed in this field. The start and end scan times are displayed in these fields in a clock time format. You can switch to an elapsed time format if desired. We can see that the start time was zero and this particular experiment took approximately one hour and 41 minutes. If you know the collection time of the particular bar graph scan of interest, you can type that time in the required offset field and then click Find Nearest Scan button. The nearest scan will be displayed in the field below. In this case, we know the exact scan we want, but to illustrate the use of time, let's see what scan is at one hour, 30 minutes. We'll click Find Near Scan, and we see that scan 789 is at this time. I can now refine my search by adding or subtracting time until I find the scan of interest. But of course, I know which scan I want, so I'll just type that scan number into the field. But that is just an alternate way to search for data. The Select Data Stream dropdown should always be set to Bar Chart. In this field, you can tell the program to exclude particular masses from the exported data. This is very useful. For instance, in this case, the data was collected with helium as the purge gas. And so I'm going to have the program not export mass to charge four, since I know that will be a large signal that has no relation to the polystyrene decomposition products and will only act to complicate the library search. The title of the scan will be RGA scan. You can certainly input different names if you're going to export multiple files. If you know information such as the molecular formula, the cache registry number, or the molecular weight, you can put those into these fields here. It's not required, and that information is only stored as added text to the exported file. Finally, the output file name is shown here, and we can see that it will be converted to a .jdx format, which is one of the readable formats of the NIST library. Once everything is set to your liking, click Export, and the file is converted. 
The final step is to now bring the exported file into the NIST library. We go to File, Open to find the file of interest. There it is. We click Import All, and here's the imported data in the NIST library. If you are not familiar with this, let's go through the various windows. The raw data is shown in the top window along with text information from the exported file. The bottom window shows information from the top hit within the library files. The lower left window shows the list of hits. We can scroll through the list with this slider. We can see that the top hit at a probability of 75% is styrene monomer, and that makes sense. So for styrene monomer, this window shows the library spectrum and structure. The window to the right gives further information. The middle window has a comparison of the library data and the raw data. In this case, we are looking at a head-to-tail comparison, but you can click on other tabs here to see other types of comparisons. In the head-to-tail comparison, the red data at top is the raw data, and the blue data at bottom is the library data. We can click on the Difference tab to see that type of comparison, or a side-by-side -side or a subtraction comparison by clicking on these other tabs. Personally, I find the head-to-tail to be the most informative. By clicking on other substances within this list, you can judge other comparisons to the data. So we can click through several here, for example, to see how they match up with the data. But in the end, the styrene monomer is the best hit. And that is how you use the JDX Export File Conversion Program. This tech tip reviewed the JDX Export File Conversion Program for mass spectrometer data files. Please stay tuned for more helpful tips from TA Instruments, and thank you for your interest.